Right now, I'm in the most radioactive city on the planet. 35 years ago, Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, sending out an unbelievable amount of radiation across the country of Ukraine. The first word that something was seriously wrong came from this power plant in eastern Sweden. Over 50,000 people had to evacuate their homes. And now, all that is left is a city where time no longer passes. The most radioactive city on the planet. And that is why today, myself, Ben Morris, Cameraman Harry, and our tour guide, Misha, aka Big Mish, will be heading into the field to explore Chernobyl and the radioactive ghost town of Pripyat first hand. We were even given the amazing opportunity to go and visit a grandma or a babushka, as they call them, who had moved back into her home after being evacuated 35 years ago. Now, Chernobyl is located roughly 100 kilometers north of Ukraine's capital. So we had to start our journey by traveling 1,500 miles from London to Kiev. Quick shot of vodka at the airport to loosen us up, and we were on our way. Now, unfortunately for myself, I was sat next to Ben, who apparently claps when the plane lands. You're embarrassing me, me mates. We just landed in Kiev. The flight was, uh, it was, it was okay. First order of business, Coca-Cola and a Mars bar, and now we're going to the hotel. So we made our way through the streets of Kiev towards our hotel, and it was a mesmerizing city. And you know, Chippo, I've got an eye for landmarks. I spotted a McDonald's and a pub. You know, it's not, it's not quite Tottenham, but it's something. We then treated ourselves to some Ukrainian food. This is how much they worship vodka in Ukraine. It comes in this kind of glass. Went into the town for some Christmas celebrations and then we hit the sack because our tour guide was picking us up early in the morning. So 7.30 in the morning right now, I'm knackered. Our tour guide Misha has just arrived. He's here to pick us up. We've got a two hour journey into Chernobyl. Stopping for a quick coffee right now. I don't know what time it is. It's probably like 8 a.m. Ben looks like he's dying as per. <gasps> We're on our way to the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Something look off with that. Right, that was that was dodgy. We carried on towards the exclusion zone, and Misha handed us some papers that we had to sign to say we weren't going to break the rules. So I want to show you one of my best friends, Nikolai. This right here is a Geiger counter, okay? It's used to measure the radioactivity around you. Above 0 0.3, not recommended. While they're discussing serious Chernobyl business in the front of the car, yeah, I'm drinking a kid's yogurt yeah. drink. Nutritional value. That's why I have the body of a Greek god. Just signing my soul away to the devil right now. So I signed my soul away to Misha and we kept it moving towards the exclusion zone. So this is the entrance sign right here to the Chernobyl zone. We got our tour guide here, Misha. He's a good looking bloke. We've just got to the first checkpoint zone. This is where the guards are gonna give us like our permit papers. They even have like a Chernobyl tour shop here. I'm gonna get myself a fridge magnet so the missus doesn't kill me. So this is a personal dosimeter. Oh, okay. This is a special device which records the exposure dose that you obtain. Here we go. I'm surprised for that. Radiation has made this dog shrink. Next, we got a quick history lesson from Misha on what exactly the Chernobyl exclusion zone is, which by the way, if you don't know, is an area that extends up to 30 kilometers around the whole power plant that was most contaminated by the accident. How many people lived in Pripyat? 50,000 people. Nowadays, all those particles, dust, they all fell on the ground. Yeah. So as long as you don't dig the soil, as long as you don't eat that, don't eat the soil. Don't eat mugs. Yeah. Got you. Do not eat the soil. After crossing into the exclusion zone, the first thing we did was make friends with a wild fox. I ain't never seen a fox that close, you know. I mean, in the UK, a fox won't just stop and like come up to you like, what's up, boss? This is actually one of the first abandoned settlements that we're coming across and it's like hidden away and as far as you can see that the building over the years has started to collapse. You can actually see like the little fridge that they would have had all the stuff in there. What a crazy place. At weekends, such kind of places were used as discos, it's a local disco place. I used to throw some discos here. Get me on the decks, you know. 0 0.16 on the, on the Nikolai. I wonder how much we buy any car I'd give you for that. 100 quid? Grass all over it. Balenciaga. <laughs> well, I like the damp. House is getting ready to collapse. 
apps. This was just the first abandoned settlement that we'd come across since we entered the zone, and it was clear to see that nature was taking over. It was a sad sight to see so many people's homes and cars just left there to rot. So we're currently in Chernobyl town. This is like where the center used to be, and now it's like a memorial. This row of like signs here is over 200 different settlements that were evacuated when the disaster happened. Misha's settlement itself is also somewhere in here. Right behind us is the courthouse where the eight workers who got blamed for the Chernobyl disaster, that's where their trial was held. This right next to us is the hotel that we'll be staying in tonight in Chernobyl. It is Chernobyl town's only hotel. It is a five-star hotel, also a five-star restaurant. We're actually going to have lunch there right now. I think I'm going to get some oysters with maybe some black cod. It ain't no boo. I'm excited. Ukrainian lunch in Chernobyl town. Yeah, this is lit like November. Wow. So we've just gone through the second checkpoint. We are getting closer and closer to the city of Pripyat, which is, of course, the ghost town. You should just said this part of the, the zone is it's severely contaminated. contaminated. Oh, wow. 1.2. This, this is not recommended. You can't be sticking around in this kind of radiation wow. for too long. Side, supposed to be number six. We are approaching the reactor from the disaster, reactor four. So right behind us, you can see that big metal dome. That is where reactor four was. That is where the destroyed reactor is. It's right underneath that. The explosion from reactor four is what caused this whole place to need to evacuate. It's quite eerie looking at it. It's like a tomb. Shielded it off from the wall with this big shiny silver dome. Over 0 0.3 is not recommended. Oh, it's two. Now we got two. <laughs> That's not real. 1.5 on the Nikolai, aka the Geiger counter, because look at how close we're actually stood to reactor number four. They built this so that none of the radiation dust gets out into yeah. the air. Meant to be airtight. I don't know how airtight it is. The reading slowly go up, up and up. They rise, rise, rise slowly. Mm -hmm. Almost because radiation two. comes from there. We have just gotten to our third checkpoint and we are about to enter the ghost town of Pripyat. So that is the main avenue right there. And if you look just over there behind the iPad, what it used to look like. That's how it used to look. That's how it looks now. 0.28 right here. Right now we're in the main square of Pripyat. You know, you probably remember this place. You probably know about it. It's got the swimming pool. It's got the Ferris wheel. It is a shadow of its former self, which is quite sad, really. Every single building in this place is obviously abandoned. 50,000 people used to live here. And now, zero. Arriving in Pripyat was a strange but familiar feeling. It was kind of like I knew the place from all the Call of Duty that I played back in the day and all the research I've done about it online. It, it's seen some stuff, this building. Yeah. You know, it's been through some shit. Like you're a flat. That this probably looks better. You know, we're in the abandoned town of Pripyat. Wait. It's an amazing place to be in a in a strange way. First thing he says is, this would be a great place to have a racetrack. They should do an F1 GP out here. One recommendation for you: don't step on the moss. On the moss. On the moss. The actual construction for Pripyat began in 1970, and by 1987, it was already abandoned. And you'll see as we travel through the town that the Soviet Union's influence and propaganda remains prominently throughout. The town was very beautiful, very modern, model city with all modern infrastructure. Inhabitants were really, really young, 26, 28 years. Mm. How old are you? 27. Well, you see, your age. Like evacuation was started 36 hours after initial explosion, like next day, let's say. And within three and a half hours, all inhabitants were taken away from here. How many people in total died from the effects of radiation over time? Nobody knows. Sure. Is it, nobody has an idea? According to World Health Organization, like 4,000 people. Well, if you pay your attention, you can see that the level of soil is slightly lower than the pavement. They washed it, the entire town. And then they removed some 15, 20 centimeters of the topsoil that mm -hmm. contained all those like radioactive isotopes. Yeah. So just outside this pector pack here, it is a restaurant. Of course, we have the Nikolai. This thing is looking, uh, that's pretty dodgy. Oh my God, 15. Oh my God, this thing's just going up. 31, 35. So yeah, unfortunately we can't go inside because you There's know the building. load of radiation. That was awful. That was, you've really ruined it. Is that Donald Trump? Young Donald. <laughs> Something that surprised me is there is a lot of art in Pripyat. Some of it is actual murals commissioned by the government, and well, some of it is unfortunately from people entering illegally and then vandalizing the place. I'm freezing, by the way. I don't know what temperature it is, but this is a little bit too cold for Don Crimes. Content must go on. The show must continue. 
the things we will do for the thumbnail. This is the amusement park. It actually never got to open because it was scheduled to open the May after the disaster. And obviously that time never came. So there it is, rusting away. Never been used besides in testing. But yeah, it's just desolate. Yeah, this is wild. I bet these bumper carts would have slapped as well, you know. Those real proper rugged ones where you get battered. Now we had to get moving because there was plenty more of Pripyat for us to see before it got dark. But Misha did say that it might be possible for us to return to the amusement park once the sun went down. Buildings are making noises, man. Boy, now we're walking into uncharted territory. I know I said earlier that the place wasn't too creepy, but now we've come to like this kindergarten. Kindergarten? Yeah, we'll call it a nursery. You can see all the beds inside just stacked up, but it gets even weirder than that. Have a look at this doll. Look at that doll. Like what? That actually is kind of scary. 30 plus years ago, some little girl, oh boy, was playing with this doll. And they were all running around in this room, doing all kids stuff, you know, cooking fake potato waffles. I can actually see a fake waffle on the floor. That is a waffle. Many facilities in the town were still in use for many years. Really? Yeah. By who? By workers. Right behind us is the sports hall. Well, it was a sports hall. What's left of it? Slowly rotting away because of all the moisture. Insane to see. There's actually still a ball in the hoop. It doesn't look far off my sports hall back at my school, but it's obviously not destroyed. Echo. That was it. I did not. I did not echo. <laughs> Chris and D is wrapping one top bins in there. This is actually the back end of the school, and what you're about to see is crazy. It's completely collapsed. Have a look at that. It's like it's been demolished, but it's just naturally collapsed over the time. There's literally still stuff on the board. I don't know what it says. The Soviet stuff on the walls. A bit of Soviet propaganda for the boys. So literally about to take a look at Pripyat's hospital or what was. There, Harry. There's one place that's going to be creepy. It's a hospital. Look down there. So here's in front of us, you can see the place where they brought first victims of the disaster. All highly contaminated uniforms, mm -hmm. helmets. Gloves, radiation that you got inside of your body. Your skin starts to fall off, hair, nails, like, and there's nothing pretty much you can do with that. That's a horrible way to go. So we do actually have to leave now. We have to go back to the hotel in the town of Chernobyl because you're not allowed to be here after dark it is illegal and we are not doing illegal things. Soviet vending machines. Look at that. Could do with a fanta. Now, obviously, it's getting darker. As things get darker, it gets a little bit scary. <laughs> I won't lie, but look at this lake. Fancy as you swim. The river's just iced over. We've all played Warzone. We're right outside the swimming pool. You know how many times I slide cancelled in this place? You can see the diving board in there as well. I'm freezing. Ugh. Freezing my nuts off, just tried to take a picture. I look like crap. Okay, so we've come back to the Ferris wheel now that it's dark. This is crazy. The stairs are gone, so you're not even able to get on the Ferris wheel even if you wanted to. So that marks the end of our first day. Now we're gonna go back to the hotel, have dinner, maybe a couple of bevs. Would be rude not to. But I stand in these things and check if we have picked up too much radiation. Just need to step on it and press your hands on both sides. You wait. Then you see the second line. It shows clean. Everything is fine. And press, hold, one. Clean. Let's go! Easy! We had a quick stop off at a local shop, which was incredibly cheap, by the way. So we just got back to the hotel in Chernobyl Town. It's like 9 p.m. I'm so tired, but I'm gonna give you a quick room tour. Welcome to Casa del Che. Lavender colored sheets. But I've got a heater in it to keep it warm because it is like minus five outside. Got a wonky painting. Yeah, I just like to keep the culture prominent in the room. Chair for a guest. A bit lonely in here, isn't it? No, not really. This is Ben and Cameraman Harry's room. This is actually what I missed out on. Premium, two single beds. Vibes are really high in air. Oh, COVID, COVID. Stop. Oh, give, that big, Stop. give that big toast some top. 
<laughs> we are actually freezing. It's dinner time. It must be like minus one inside. And dinner is, from the looks of it, a little chicken pasta thing. Have we got any crisps? <laughs> so it's Christmas in Ukraine today. What's that? January the 7th? Merry Christmas. Okay, so it's like 8 a.m. in the morning. It's day two. And it has snowed on Christmas Day in Chernobyl in Ukraine. So we set off in snowy Chernobyl to a top secret radar station. Except it's not so top secret anymore because Chibok Crimes has snuffed them out. You guys might even recognize this place as a ray from Warzone. So the radar station it is behind us. It's a long path to it. We had to stop because Ben wanted to take a, an Instagram picture. It's the body still. As we were getting closer to the station, I decided to do my daily stretches. And Ben even got a souvenir off the guy at the checkpoint. Looks like just got a um, Soviet little badge. Yes. It's getting really cold out here. You are now watching a HBO special. What's that one where it's like, naughty America, nobody does it better. I know that. <laughs> yeah, there were many errors in the operation because it was a kind of brand new technology. Then you can see all the barrels. Before they started their shift, 100 grams of vodka, just to forget what they were doing. I'm joking. Come oh on. my god. <laughs> <laughs> For a second he had me. Yeah, that's a good picture, man. That's it right there, I just hit the jackpot. I'm gonna sell that. There it is. Look at the size of it. Taller than a shard, that. Anyway, so yeah, this is the radar station. It was actually used to detect nuclear missiles that were being launched from the United States. But it is something. I feel quite small now. You're quite insane. small. That's just rude. We're stood right in front of it. It's quite a surreal, surreal moment, taking it all in. Not the radiation, the radar. So there it is. In all its glory, the Duga radar. It's actually only 490 feet, so it's not quite the same height as the Shard. However, it was once used to save the world. And before it was declassified, there was a theory going around that this place was being used for Soviet mind control and even weather control. Yeah, it's probably an i9 processor that. It's computer stuff. Hello! Cool. Rude. And as you can see, the place has been turned completely upside down. Nothing remains besides like old scattered computer parts. In this room right here, you can see by all the road signs on the wall. Soldiers that were in the army would learn like how to drive here. It'd be easy for them to get a license. Um, I'm sure probably wouldn't be driving a Fiat 500 though. This is one for the boys here. Wow. Oh, wow. That happens when you bring kids to Chernobyl. This right here is a memorial towards the firefighters. They were obviously the first people on the scene when the reactor blew up. They saved many, many lives. So we left the radar station and started making our way to Babushka's house for a Christmas dinner. On our way, we actually even passed some of the homes of other resettlers. And of course, me and Ben fell asleep because, uh, well, it was quite the long journey. Morning, mm. sleeping beauties. <laughs> Slept in the car, but we are here. So we're about to go and visit a Babushka, which is an elderly woman who has moved back into her original home after being evacuated all those years ago. It's nice of her to let us come and visit her on Christmas day as well. So her family might be there. Here we go. Babushka Marusa. 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 How do you say Marusa. happy Christmas? Shasliboho Rizdva. Wow. Shasliboho Rizdva. Shasliboho Rizdva. Just close the door. Yeah, come in. Come into the house. Thank you so much. Shasliboho Rizdva. Not bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> the house is very homely and incredibly traditional. I haven't been to many houses like this in my lifetime, but Babushka and her family made me feel right at home. That's the warmest place in the home, in the house. Like that. You just go there and fall asleep. It's so warm. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. That seat up there must yeah, be so good. Skuimo, da, da, da. Skuimo. Soviet style microwave. Wow. That's when they cooked. So Babushka Marusia was born in 1940. Now calculate, Josh. How old she is? 81. Very good, Josh. Good calculator. <laughs> This is actually homemade vodka, uh, and it's called Moonshine. Babushka made this herself. So in Ukraine we have a tradition. You can't, uh, when you enter the house for the first time, you drink not less than three shots. No, you can do three. Like, you will do three. I'll be honest, the hotel food on this trip, not great, but the meal that Babushka cooked us up was incredible. Very traditional. It was actually completely homegrown as well, straight from her back garden. How often do you get that? It was amazing. 
You support Manchester United? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could. Game. I would take you to a Manchester United and game. And I'll bring vodka. Yeah, take you to first all oh, traffic game. Shot for that. For the deal. Yeah, make, make it more solid. Sausage in my mouth. Friendship. For friendship. In in Ukrainian. Very strong. We're gonna be so annoying in the car journey back. We're gonna need some tunes, Misha. Being fed well. Food is incredible. It's Christmas here, so it's a big celebration. I can't believe we're just out there Christmas. I think this is better than my Christmas day. This is like something you'll never experience ever in your life. You go in Chernobyl, babushka dinner. Amazing. You speak better English than most of my mates. You speak better English than some people in England. Big Misha. Big me. Misha has said. The third and final shot. The third one is for love and for ladies. For love and for ladies. <laughs> you got three shots. Me, you're gonna kill me. You're fine, man. You sure? No. You, this man did this to us. Well, he's a good friend now. He says, oh. when the f*** they She likes us. Yeah. For Big okay. Mish. For Big, for big Mish. mish. <laughs> yeah. Just, you had a good time with us? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we're absolutely. Just, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, but perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Tell her I said, Food is amazing. Fantastic food, fantastic cooking, and thank you so much for coming, letting us come into her home. She's always pleased. To me, but she considers me personally as her like kid, so she's oh. always pleased to meet oh. me with my guests. So that's why I told you I love to come to the so yeah. to the babushka. So yeah. yeah, it's better to have 100 friends than 100. Meeting Babushka Marusa and her family taught me a lot about how resilient some people are. Despite her living in such a radioactive place, there was still life in the exclusion zone. And it was heartwarming how passionate she was about returning to her homeland. That was one of the best experiences in my life in the terms of I've just experienced something that I will never ever experience ever again. I've just celebrated Christmas with Babushka on the Ukrainian Christmas day. So we drove off into the sunset, singing songs with a stomach full of moonshine. And that right there ends our adventure in Chernobyl.